Do you remember the Shire, Mr. Frodo? It'll be spring soon. And the orchards will be in blossom. And the birds will be nesting in the shamrock thicket. And they'll be sowing the potatoes in the lower fields. And drinking them down with a less pint of Guinness. Do you remember the taste of Guinness, Mr. Frodo? Why, why do you sound Irish, Sam? I don't know, Mr. Frodo. It just happened. I can't recall the taste of potatoes or Guinness, Sam. I'm naked in the dark. I think you're having flashbacks to my stag do, Mr. Frodo. Oh, yes. Of course. Ah, let's forget about this ring business. I'm taking you for a pint. Come on! Can the Rings of Power go a single day without annoying, well, a new group of people? I don't think that should be rhetorical, but it, I, I mean, it isn't rhetorical because I don't think they can go a single day, but it has been funny watching the media kind of turn on it, kind of uh, go from this positive thing to finally start saying like, hey, wow, like nobody's really talking about this show to... You know, there's like one guy at Forbes, Eric Kane, who really came out early and was pointing out a lot of the pro the problems with the show. Uh, even Paul Tassi uh, over at Forbes uh, did point out some negative stuff. But now we're getting even more people, and now a whole new group of angry, offended people are coming after the diverse and inclusive rings of power. So you open yourself up to this stuff, don't you? When you have... Um, when you talk about being diverse and inclusive, it's like a dog whistle to the people who are looking to be not included and to be offended. Um, by the way, big announcement today, just launched for a limited time only. By the way, our salted caramel, pumpkin spice, and spiked jack-o'-lantern are all limited time flavors only. I don't think I ever said that. They're not going to be here forever. Uh, probably all go off the market on 10-1, or I mean at the end of October. Just launched Salted Caramel today. It is super delicious. Available in both whole bean and ground. Pick yourself up a bag of that. Maybe get some spiked jack o and a pumpkin spice too so you can rotate and enjoy a fall flavor in your mouth every single day. Uh, promo code The Quartering will save you money and it'll go directly to supporting the show. So pick up a bag today. Maybe give it as a gift. So the Rings of Power has been squeezing out uh, a few reviews a day, like six or seven reviews a day they're allowing onto their website, which it now is at 18,300 reviews, and it's remained at exactly 3.2 out of 4. I can't remember exactly what it was at. It was at either a 3.4 or a 3.2 when it said, you know, when it started the shenanigans with, you know, by deleting 5,000 negative reviews, which I thought was curious, um, and then only bringing it back after serious backlash and you look at again most recent reviews uh what is this about 10 of them eight of the 10 are one one star two three four five six one star one two star so seven are either one star or two star and then there's a single four <clears throat> and as i've always said like if you enjoy the show you win like no matter what no matter like Yes, I, this is the content cycle, right? People are talking about Rings of Power. People are criticizing Rings of Power. That's just what it is. But if you are watching a piece of content, listening to a record, reading a comic book, reading a manga, whatever the case is, and, and you enjoy it, you win. I always want to make that clear. Um, now, the show sitting at a 3.2 on Amazon had a new couple of hit pieces out, essentially. This from The Guardian, written today. Irish people have faced centuries of discrimination. Why are Lord of the Rings accents so offensively bad? And we've actually talked about this. This was an article before the show even launched. Now The Guardian's picking up on it. What is this, famine cosplay? Asked Ed Power in the Irish Times after glimpsing the Harfoots wandering around Middle-earth in Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power in the weeks since then. 
he has been far from the only person to object. Simpleton proto-hobbits, who, Power wrote, were rosy cheeks slathered in muck, wearing twigs in their hair, and speaking stage Irish accents in that make the cast of the Wild Mountain Thyme sound like Daniel Day-Lewis. Indeed, Amazon's multi-million dollar series has upset just about everybody since it debuted on the streaming platform. You have the Tolkien scholars who say it's not Tolkien, the anti-Amazon folk who object to the company as a whole, and the vast amount of spent on the series, I really haven't seen much of that, and those who see the Harfoot's accents as, at worst, clumsy, tone-deaf cultural appropriation and a reinforcement of negative stereotypes. Far less legitimately are those, are, and more malevolently, you have an uproar of actors of color being cast in the series. But am, considering Amazon's commitment to that welcome diversification of Middle Earth, the fact that no one in production stopped to consider that Irish people might be upset by the Harfoots is especially baffling. Why, they're white. Like, are you kidding? Is it, is it weird that I have to say that? Like, I've, I've kind of just started saying that now. Because that's why. Right? That's why no one asked or cared. It's because they're white. Leith. McPherson is a dialect coach on the Rings of Power and has 25 years experience in the field. Having worked on Peter Jackson's Hobbit trilogy, among other films, in various interviews has spoken of the research and craft involved in coaching dialect on a project that is of this scale. And in an interview with Inverse, she said <coughs> that the aim was to make sure an accent doesn't take audiences to their nanas down the road. The Harfoots then speak with an Irish base to their accent. But she continued that they do not speak as if they're from a particular cross street in Dublin. I mean, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I, I imagine that, like, people with distinct accents, I, you know, I suppose I have a distinct accent to people. Um, you know, I, I, I are probably always nitpicking when people try to sound like them. Um, it's like when uh, people, you know, mimic the Midwest they have an upward inflection and they think they think we all talk like this um you know we're going to go down into the snack shack and we're going to you know we're going to go go uh, whack a few balls at the driving range like yeah maybe in Sheboygan or northern Wisconsin but like we don't talk like that in southern Wisconsin and they you know Minnesota you know not everyone's a youper in Michigan like all this stuff so i mean yeah it's i mean i don't I don't sweat it. It's not like offending me on a cultural core level. Um, but like the, and then you see <clears throat> this article by Paul Tassie finally getting on the truth serum. Metrics indicate House of the Dragon interest near double rings of power. I'm a frankly, I'm frankly a little tired of people telling me I shouldn't be comparing House of the Dragon to the rings of power. Two fantasy series with huge budgets on giant streaming services. Not to mention Amazon's entire goal in sinking as much money as they have in the Lord of the Rings universe was to have their own version of Game of Thrones, which House of the Dragon has been spun out of. And as such, I do think it's worth noting that so far things seem to be going a bit better for House of the Dragon compared to Rings of Power. And no, I'm not talking about the audience score, score but sure also those. Now we talked about this. It's Paul Tassi's covering this, this article that we talked about. And like... They're extremely basic calculations. Like anyone can see that Google searches for House of the Dragon have been close to double to that of Rings of Power most of the time. And third party services are tracking similar results. Of course, we see the House of the Dragon at 55x, Rings of Power at 3x. You know, Parrot Analytics, which measures audience demand for a series, projects that while House of the Dragons at 55x of the demand shows series, they measure the Rings of Power as 30x, a little less than half. Amazon is very much pot committed to the Rings of Power. No matter what happens, they have front loaded their investment in the series, which should reportedly run for five seasons and will likely see it through to the end. It has certainly performed well for Amazon Prime series as the service biggest debut ever. But again, compared to the rivals on HBO and Netflix, I'm not sure it's a breakout on the level they wanted. With interest lagging behind both House of the Dragon and even She-Hulk. Like, She-Hulk has more viewers and interest than Rings of Power? At least according to these metrics. 
Given the long arc of the series, it may further engage audiences in time as most of the season feels like a setup for future conflicts and it would not be the first show to pick up steam after the second after season two. In a way, it's confronting, comforting that Amazon has committed to it for the long haul so we can try to get invested in these characters without worrying about a Netflix-style cancellation. I don't know that you can necessarily do that. You see this Amazon Rings of Power from 39 minutes ago isn't making as big of a splash as HBO's House of the Dragon, and it shows the potential risks of dueling big-budget fantasy shows. The shows are airing at the same time. Rings of Power debuted 40 years after House of the Dragon did, and while the house, the shows are drastically different in tone, they're still both big-budget fantasy stories serving as flagships for TV properties. Both had a strong debut. House of the Dragon was HBO's biggest premiere, being watched by 10 million people in the U.S. on the first night across linear streaming. Meanwhile, Amazon said 25 million viewers globally tuned into the first two episodes of Rings of Power. In a statement to Insider, Amazon said that the series continues to be the most watched show worldwide on Prime Video, breaking all previous viewing records. Sure, okay. But the Rings of Power is still experiencing other pitfalls, those of a new series trying to cater to a pre-existing but emphatic fan base, while also trying to reel in new fans unfamiliar with its immense mythology, all while other series of similar calibers air at the same time. Google Trends show that searches related to House of the Dragon spike with impressive consistency weekly after each episode, showing sustained interest. Searches related to the Rings of Power, however, peaked after its debut that tells you something there too doesn't it? it tells you that people are not that people are not they're not growing their audience certainly they're not holding their audience either even piracy data shows more interest in house of the dragon in the first weeks of their premiere episodes house of the dragon had 45 percent more privacy piracy then Rings of Power, according to the piracy analytics company Muso. That spiked with the second episodes when House of the Dragon pri was pirated 127% more, almost more than double. Prime Video is available in over 200 countries, while HBO Max is only in 60. But the explosion in piracy for House of the Dragon between the episodes 1 and 2 shows growing demand. Rings of Power is struggling to escape poor audience reviews. What has been well received by critics... Overall, critical score on Rotten Tomatoes audience have seemed at first glance less enthusiastic. It has a 39% overall audience score on Rotten Tomatoes and a 2.4 out of 10 on Metacritic. A quick look at audience reviews on Rotten Tomatoes suggests some are just bored with the series or nitpicky about some aspects of the show, and its prime score isn't mind-blowing, even after Amazon, quote, weeded out trolls. Much of the poor response could be due to review brigading, which is the practice of intentionally lowering an audience score. Um... Rotten Tomatoes isn't the best reflection of fan sentiment. With that in mind, it's also impossible to prove just how vast the bad faith takes are. So none of this is to say that Rings of Power isn't popular for what it's worth. I like the series, but understand why the masses might find the expansive world building hard to engage with. Amazon is committed to five seasons, and it could still very well turn into a phenomenon. It absolutely could. I might win the lottery tomorrow, too. You know what's 100% guaranteed, though? You enjoying our salted caramel, pumpkin spice, or spike jack on Or if you don't like flavored coffees, our dark roast is easily our best seller, 004, or our 002 Ethiopian light roast. We have double caffeinated. We also have a few spots left in our Roaster's Choice program, which is a monthly tour of small, super small batch uh, coffees from around the world. If you're a coffee aficionado, you definitely want to join this. Promo code the quartering to save. We'll talk to you again real soon.